I've been, we're going, I know it's going to be a little bit weird, but we're going from the bottom up. So that way it's like chronological order for where they came in. So let's start over. Hello, I've been playing a lot of Supervive lately, especially Jewel. Have a few questions. Number one, I've seen players still kill camps after day level cap. What are the benefits of killing camps besides XP and shards? So they wouldn't get XP, but they do get shards. Also, the shards give experience. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, that's a weird way to word it, but yeah, it gives experience to your equipment. Levels up your equipment. <clears throat> Do you know where the ghost spawn? I do. I actually have a map that I might feel confident leaking to you guys on stream. Mm -hmm. Let me think. I mean, it's a pretty good map. I put a lot of work into it. I feel confident sharing it. Let me find it. Took me hours to make it, and I feel like all the high yellow players kind of have it memorized, so I'll throw you guys a bone. Good luck finding where I saved it, though. Desktop. Uh, super vibe mobs. There we go. I just need to add this as a window. Mobs. No, why is it just black? Uh. Okay, I can still fix it. Mobs, photos, supervised mobs, capture. This is not working, huh? Interesting. Let's try adding it as a file. Add image, here we go. Browse this PC, desktop, supervise mobs. There you go. So the legend, I think that's what they call it, the legend is the pink dots are the jellyfish, like the little pink ones in the abyss, the light pink. The dark pink are your normal creep camps. The white are boars, the green are the exploding guys, and they drop consumables. The blue are ghosts, the yellow are golems, and those give a lot of XP. The big orange dots, there's two of them, are chest guys. If you have a yellow key, you can knock them off or kill them and open them up. And the red are... The machine mobs, which are miniature golems now. They were just mobs before when I made this map. I think that's everything. I just realized my YouTube live chat is broken again. Give me a second. Like, so many times I've made a lot of changes, to be fair, but... This chat is constantly bugging. YouTube got to straighten that out. Get it together, YouTube. Okay, so yeah, screenshot it, save it. It's a very good map. You can alt tab to it between games. And this way you know where a lot are. There are some small changes for the record, like this mob raid. Well, you can't see my cursor, I don't think, but the mob at the bottom of site 38 has been changed into a boar. It's not a pack anymore. There's some other changes that I can't remember right now. Okay, back to the question. Um, so that's where ghosts spawn. I think ghosts are game changer in tempo and snowballing. So ghosts were bugged for a long time that they only gave half XP. So they were really bad. But now with the books, you could be right. Ghosts could be really, really strong combined with their XP being fixed. Sometimes a rune circle spawns underneath a recently killed mob camp. What is it? A summonable mob? So number three um, is the biome leaders. They're called like challengers or champions or something now. I keep forgetting the name. But they spawn after you kill a certain amount of camps within the biome. 
and some biomes require more or less camps to be killed, and they have pre-designated spawn locations, just like souls. So if you get familiar with a biome, you know where they're going to drop or where they're going to spawn, but also you know what they can have for their power because they come with a power. Now let me, I also have that written down somewhere. I didn't make that. I believe it was Niza that found it out. But he knows all of the powers for every biome, but they also change each patch. Or not each patch, but every so often, so they could be outdated too. <clears throat> but I can pull that up on stream too. Just making sure I don't leak anything again. Also, I have a list, like you didn't ask, but <clears throat> I have a list of all the experience for every mob so that you can calculate how to get levels and how it all works. But I would not be worrying about any of that until you're like on a team planning routes for scrims and stuff. Um, if you want the list of the biome guys, I'll put it in my Discord because it's too long to pull up on stream and it's too long to put in a comment and people are going to keep asking for it. And I put nice guy, Niza, so Niza was the one who created it as far as I know. It's in the Super Vibe resources channel if you check out my Discord. Okay, back to the questions. Oh yeah, so just to clarify with the spawning thing is like if you go to Underrot, for example, Underrot only has two packs, one at the bottom, one at the top, and the biome guy can spawn on either pack. I've been trying to find out what predetermines which way they spawn, like is it based on the time that they're killed or what, but I haven't nailed it yet. I'm getting close, but I don't know the answers yet. And then there's one biome guy at Kai Kobayashi, the town. At the bottom, there's just that one pack. If you kill him instantly, the, the biome leader will spawn and they give like double experience of a normal camp. So grouping up to kill the biome leader is really good. It levels your team really fast. Like it's time efficient to kill it and you get a power, which the other camps don't give. Um, would you ever swap your equipment for exotic equipment? If so, which ones? So that's a great question. I've personally told the devs multiple times that the exotic equipment is still too weak. They added one called the skeleton key, which was really strong, but then they took it out. It was like a, it was a tech blade. So it gave ability haste, ability power, and it opened up vaults. But yeah, it's gone. So right now the only exotic equipment is vamp blade or vamp items. And vamp's kind of, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of vamp. I am on Gunner because Gunner is OP, but also the vamp items just got buffed. So like, why wouldn't I just play my vamp item instead of the exotic item? That's just my take on it. Um, I could see in a scrims environment when it's hard to get power shards and it's hard to upgrade your gear. Maybe you put all of your power shards into your rampage, let's say, and you get your first item blue or up to red, and then you swap out your white item for a fully charged exotic red item. Like, I've been saying that could be a strat for a long time, but I don't think anyone's really doing it. Um, yeah, so great questions, Kimbap X. Thanks for the questions. What do I do? I just, I don't want to click that because it might remove the rest first time doing this. I'll see the follow ups here. Here are some of the answers to your questions. The point of keep farming creeps, even after level cap, upgrade your equipment, you have stronger equipment. He skipped number two, that's okay. The rune shows on the ground after you kill a camp of creeps, indicates that more creeps will spawn at the same time in a few seconds. A little bit to farm creeps. Um, yeah, I mean, he's trying to help out. I like that. Guys, questions were great. The equipment you choose to use on each game will depend on your character you're playing. Equipment you choose to use on each game will depend. Yes, that's right. The build you're doing, the situation match you're currently playing comes down to what's best. Yes. So, I mean, this number four answer was kind of not great from Gyros because obviously he knows this when he asked a question. Um, he Like this guy is basically just trying to ask how good is exotic equipment. And I agree. I think exotic equipment's bad. 
and they should buff it or change it again. Except for maybe the glide boots. The glide boots might be good, but I don't take them. I'll give them to my teammate most of the time. Some more info, those are called biome bosses. They spawn after each camp in the biome area or are killed. See, so this guy doesn't fully understand it either. You don't need to kill each camp. You only need to kill the amount required in the biome <laughs> to spawn the biome guy. And you're probably wondering, well, hey, improving, what, what's that number? And the answer is I still don't know because some biomes take three camps to spawn it and some biomes take four camps to spawn it. But if you go to a biome that has five camps in it, like Academy, you don't need to kill all five camps for it to spawn. You only got to kill three. It's like, it's just a weird system because you go to, um, uh, there's somewhere else where you need to kill four. There's it's a spot that spawns with four and you need to kill all four. It might be Wellspring. I forget. I haven't done it in a while. But yeah, you need to kill all four of the four camps for the biome guy to spawn. It's just like, there's no real, I've been trying to pin down the biome guy thing for a while. It's really hard. I know like the best thing you can do is just understand where it will spawn so that if you land into a POI contested and you're fighting over XP, like let's say you land somewhere with four camps and each team gets two camps. You guys will all, both teams, all eight players will be level two. And now it comes down to, do you guys fight each other level two or what can you do to get an advantage over that team? And it's going to come down to whoever last hits the biome guy wins the fight. So A, you need to know where it spawns. B, you need to know where the enemy is to try to zone them from taking the last hit. And C, you need to have a character with a strong last hit, which is normally jewel dash early game. And then as it gets later in the game, you have some better ultimates and stuff that can secure last hits. But you probably wouldn't use it on a biome guy later in the game, just to like, you know, give you an example. Um, for, to be honest, the exotic equipments are kind of bad. True. If you're playing a character that is not dependent on a specific build, you can take them for more stats, but be careful of discarding something like your mana item. True. Okay, we go up. See, look at this guy. What a nice guy. You're so underrated. How are you not famous yet? There's the heart. Let's go get the heart. Let's get the smiley too. Hit him with the cool guy glasses. Hit him with that one. Okay, next question. Why are all the high elo players never picking up the armor repairs and running around with broken armor 90% of the game? That's a great question. I've been bad for this. Um, a lot of the times I think that the person wearing the better tier gear should be picking up the armor repair. But yeah, I need to be doing a lot more with armor, buying green, buying blue, keeping it repaired, picking a base camp up, repairing it between fights. Wait, my Discord's not working. That's mine going off. Let me uh, change the audio. Hmm. Uh, one second, still. Where's the sign? Um, we'll answer this guy's question and then I'll get to yours, still. Um, why are all the high level players never picking up armor repairs and running around with broken armor 90% of the game? Because the shield also gives you damage reduction, whilst gray gives you 20%, gold gives you 35 gray actually gives you just as much raw shielding as blue one. More. In some situations, the raw shield is better, though. How do I, uh... All great questions. We are all boosted bonobo.
Just started playing the game earlier this week, been grinding with Kingpin as the initiator. Role fits my playstyle, but I saw your jewel video and been thinking to try it out too. You're doing awesome in the game, bro. Keep it up. New fan here. Hey, thank you, Stilt Walker. That's awesome. I'm glad you like the game. Uh, I think Jewel's fun, but don't get discouraged if it starts off rough because she's really squishy and you get punished a lot when you're learning the character. If you like try to do anything and you're getting hit by some random thing and dying. It's a it's a fun character though after you get the hang of it. Why are you getting dash reset without cloud? And without hitting someone fully stacked. Um, it was likely as I hit an RMD, which drops an orb, and when I picked it up, it reset my dash. You didn't like put a timestamp or anything? Still, great question though. Why is my mouse bugging? Go up. I didn't understand why his shift ability kept refreshing, even without landing it on electrified enemies. How is that possible? If you hit the right click, the electro lands. This guy answered the question greatly. Mixy. It spawns a little orb if you pick it up, it also resets your dash. What orb? I can't see any orbs when I spear. Great answers from the gang. You know Han was the guy who asked the question earlier about the armor, I believe. Tried in the training range on the hunter. Training range is bugged. Yeah, this guy said also. Perfect, perfect. Great civil conversation from the jewel players. Good stuff. Let's keep it moving. How did your dash reset at 14241 when you didn't have four stacks on your RMB? One four two four one. Oh, because I hit that stagger on the mob. Any ability that hits the purple circle. Uh, staggers it and resets that ability. I shouldn't say any ability, I'm trying to think. Are there there's some abilities that don't do it, right? Ah oh, fuck it. We can be wrong sometimes. I don't I'm not sure. It might be any ability. Well played. Hey, thank you, Mr. Amir Sahin. Fuck it, we hit him with a heart too. It's already in the copy pasta. <laughs> 